Y'all won't stop spamming my web app, and now I have to do something about it. Seriously, the VOD for Roundist, which is the first full stack T3 app I built on this channel way back a year ago, sitting with 200,000 plays almost. And because of that, it's getting spammed nonstop. You guys keep boosting Pokemon that are not round to the top of the list, and I'm tired of it. Thankfully, we have an awesome sponsor for today's show. First time I've ever taken a sponsor because I really want to check out Redis and Upstash is the best way to do it. So without further ado, let's get into how I used Upstash's Redis deployments to make it so y'all cannot break my app anymore. I am so hyped because they make it incredibly easy for us to have fast, global, low latency data. They did an awesome blog post recently about rate limiting at the edge with Cloudflare workers. They have a open source. I was really surprised when they said rate limiting SDK. I thought this was going to link to docs. Nope. This links to an awesome open source repo that only has 18 stars for some reason. I, I can't easily show the star count. There it is. But it is a super cool package to quickly set up a rate limiter. You can, So for those that don't know, a rate limiter is a thing that runs before your server that based on any of many conditions, be it who is making the call, how often they have called, what IP address they're coming from, allows you to decide whether or not their uh, request goes through. And this allows you to easily, on an edge worker, add a rate limiter that prevents users from spamming. I think this is actually what I want to build first, specifically because of all of the people who have been abusing Roundist recently. If y'all haven't seen on... Uh, if I go back to, oh, that's the technical interview. Uh, if I go to the roundest results, people have spammed 98.65% Zapdos, 78.86% Dialga. The, these are people spamming the endpoints and absolutely screwing up the uh, usage and utilization on my Vercel and on my planet scale. I want that to stop. So I think the first thing we're going to do is make that stop using the new rate limit SDK. How do we feel about that as our first thing to do with Redis, and then we can go possibly build a whole app with it from scratch after. And I'm taking a look at this example repo here. I think most of the code is going to be in the middleware. Redis, rate limit fixed, middleware. Look at that. This looks fantastic. Want to see how easily we can get this going? Let's do it. This is a blog post on how to get started. They told me I could stream, so we're going to test the limits of that. I am not going to hide my screen when I set this up. And if they reveal the info for the new database I created with like just showing it on the screen, I'll be upset. I'll delete it and redo it. It's a mistake a lot of people make, but this is learning for everybody. So let's see. We'll uh, roundest rate limiter. Did I make it global? Do they even say in here what they recommend or if they have a recommendation? Do not choose global. Instead, create multiple diff databases in different regions where you expect traffic. Interesting. That sounds more complex than I was expecting. That's fine. We'll go with it for now. The database is already in West 2, so hitting an edge in West 2 is not going to be the worst thing. It's definitely going to show it. Cool. Let's see. I, I am expecting it now. Uh, do we want to SSL it? I don't think it... <sighs> Let's not SSL it for now. Creating... Let's see. It doesn't show it. Look at that, guys. Look at that. Great job, Upstash. Thank you. Now I'm going to hide my screen for a sec. All right, no, I'm going to go set up the environment first. And then when I'm doing environment variables, we'll deal with the next part. Cool. So happy that Upstash is already catching these Ws this early. CD code, Tmux. Using Redis client with TLS kind of sucks. Uh, the URL does not have the password. I do not think no. 
Uh, why is that open? Nope. The password is separate. I have to copy it separately. So I'm going to just ask, what is Upstash? Upstash is the easiest way to or to set up Redis for your serverless environments and distribute it around the world. It's kind of like Vercel, but instead of for your code and your deployment, it's for your Redis and your scaling of it. Cool. Oh, yeah, it shows it there. It hides it here and shows it here. <sighs> so close. So close. And we all missed it too. <sighs> Guys, don't don't put the password here. <sighs> I'm just going to not have that open for the time being and do my best to avoid it until we actually need to be there. So I think I have a separate stream. Uh, is it roundest? I don't think I have this downloaded right now. Uh, make dear stream, CD stream. Uh, and no, it's not the username, it's the password. I, I triple checked when I went through that again. It just, it, it shows you the password. So close, but so far. Uh, Cool. I wanted to go grab roundest. Come on. Quick. Hop in here. Get clone. This URL. Somebody just said they don't know what Redis is for and they're afraid to ask. And that's actually a really important rant I should probably go on and clip and put at the beginning of the video. Upstash is, a, or Redis is effectively a key value store in memory that is fast as hell. The goal of Redis is to make it easy to, to take like a computer with some memory, like RAM, and then share what's in that RAM with multiple computers as quickly as possible. Redis is mini database really, really fast. An in-memory key value store is the, the short of it. Generally, Redis is used for caching, but it can be used as a database. It can be used as an auth check. It can be used as a rate limiter. It can be used for all sorts of things. One of the cool use cases that I actually might touch on in a bit is you can use it for next auth as your auth provider or your auth adapter that actually stores the auth state. So in here, upstash Redis is an option, and this will make your authorization for your like applications insanely faster than it is if you're using Prisma as the backing for your next auth setup. Super, super cool stuff. Yeah, there's a lot of like, like within the T3 stack, there are genuinely a ton of cool places to stuff in Upstash and to stuff in Redis. I didn't take the sponsor because I needed the money. I took the sponsor sponsor because I needed the money. And I think Redis or Upstash and Redis fit well into the stack. That was a really convenient like point that I recognized as soon as they hit up or hit me up. And it's something I, funny enough, I had made an account on Upstash a day before they hit me up. It was just a perfect opportunity. So I know that they're paying me, but I do genuinely think that this fits our stack really well. So that's what Redis is. It is a super fast key value memory or, or store based in memory. First, I need to get roundest working which is going to suck pretty hard the more I think about it. Uh, get status, uh, open this up, and npm install quick. <sighs> How hard is it to set up Redis without Upstash? I haven't been long enough to say. I know that you can do it with Railway, but it doesn't handle any of the global stuff. It doesn't handle any of like the rollover stuff. There's a lot of other ways to deploy your Redis, but Upstash is one of like the biggest community like pushers. They have awesome stuff. It's almost like Upstash to Redis kind of feels like Vercel to Next in a lot of ways where they're building all of the ecosystem pieces for us as serverless developers to not worry about the relationship between uh, the different Redis instances and scale it forever. 
I I am genuine. If we were using Redis at ping, I would be using Upstash. So in here, we have the old project. I'm so scared to see version numbers here. <laughs> uh, what version of next? Okay, 1204. That's a lot less bad than I was expecting. Uh, yeah, none of these are old enough that I'm going to like be very upset with. So when asked if they have to pay for Redis and Upstash, no, Redis is the open source protocol that is used on Upstash. It's kind of similar to verse, to like MySQL and PlanetScale, where that is what they are using, and you're just paying them to use it directly. I, their pricing is actually really good too. It's a uh, uh, two cents per hundred thousand commands, so you can do a hundred thousand requests to your Upstash. Uh, Redis instance for two cents. That is absurd. So, yeah. I personally would rather pay this very small fee. Uh, sorry, 20 cents. Yeah, not two cents. 20 cents per 100,000 commands, which is, they should have a zero there. I'm bad at reading. Yeah, 20 cents per 100,000 commands is nuts. And I will happily pay that to never think about these things again. Somebody said it's kind of like Mongo to Atlas. And yeah, that's also a very, very good comparison. Give this one more go. I need to set up the environment variables for this. I'm just going to npm run dev and see what happens. It's unhappy with being old. That's going to fail because I don't have environment variables. Cool. So I think I can verse cell or let's see. Green. Yes. Ping labs. Blink. Yep. Cool. PX verse cell and V pull. And now I should be able to NPM run dev with the exact same environment that's in production locally without you guys seeing any of it. And look at that. It did exactly what it was supposed to. So the first thing I want to build is a rate limiter for this. I actually, the first thing I want to do is upgrade the next version. So we have the new middleware stuff. So let's do that first. Uh, can I Next, 12.25 is the most recent, right? Probably patch that up in a bit too. Yeah, 12.2.5. Uh, PM install, kill that. Uh, Igor, the environment leaks, we're at two environment leaks so far because I leaked the password twice and I safely got that down once. So flip your numbers. <laughs> Update by changing package JSON is mad lad. It's, it's right there. When I hover, it tells me what the newest version is. It's great. Why would I do it any differently? Uh, half joking. You should probably use the tools, but I don't use the tools. Number of environment variables that leak prediction on Twitch. Oh, that is a hilarious idea. That is an actually hilarious idea. I will think on that. Cool. So now I have the setup locally. We have the new setup. Let's start by going to not the tab that has that. I want to just yoink this middleware. <laughs> just going to copy paste see what we have to learn from there and here we want to go to pages middleware.ts is it pages middleware or is it just middleware next.js middleware ts interesting they have you put it up so high i'm putting it in source 
and it matches on API hello, we want it to match on API trpc. Uh, does the matcher let me do this? Is that valid? I think I can just match all API calls here. That's fine. Uh, need to install these packages. Uh, cool. Now with those installed, I should be able to get this configured. Uh, does it have? environment variables for how it's connecting. Oh yeah, these are up here. Uh, Redis dot from environment. Interesting, how does it do that? Upstash Redis rest URL and upstash Redis rest token. Will those, yeah, that, that'll work for how this handles things, cool. I'm going to hide all that momentarily. Wow, uh, the overlay I have for everything seems to have broken hilariously. Uh, that's fun. Let me grab those keys and quickly put those in the environment quick. Sorry, I can't share my screen while I do this and risk breaking everything. Theoretically, this should just work now. Uh, I'm going to throw a bunch of console logs in here. Uh, all right. Let's see. Uh, cool. Let's. I want to make the window smaller because people are like voting very fast, and I'll have to account for that. Theoretically, I should now be able to close, reopen this. That should just work. Are we reticent? Success true. Cool. So if I do a bunch of stuff really fast, like too fast, we should get limited. Look at that. See that? We hit got, we hit a limit. That's actually really cool, guys. I, I actually think that's cool as hell. <laughs> that it was that easy to block people from spamming too hard do you know how hard that shit used to be to do i just copy pasted this code here i'm gonna bump this to just 20 in 10 seconds that's one vote every half second it has to fetch and then when you vote that's another request so there's two requests each time yeah uh i would imagine that what's happening when we hit those limits is failures on the client side. See, this is not a valid JSON response. Uh, I would probably, so yeah, this rewrites to slash API slash blocked. You could change this to rewrite to whatever the hell you want to. Right now it's just hitting the blocked, but in the future we could redirect that to something that makes more sense. I'm just committing it now quick. Uh, we're committing uh, added upstash Redis based freight limiter. Hit push. And in however much time it takes for Vercel to deploy that, I'll open up the ping account. It doesn't matter too much. Uh, oh, it's here because I just deployed on it. We want to deploy. Let's take a bit. Not too long, hopefully. So that now, theoretically, if I just refresh super fast, so I'm making tons of requests, we should be rate limited. There we go. See that? See that, guys? How cool is that? I, I'm actually really hyped on how easy that was. I, I'm going to start using this for other things. That's dope. Rate limiters suck to set up. And I just made it so y'all can't spam this goddamn API as hard. That's really cool. 404 is right because we're redirecting to something that doesn't exist. So this is getting rewritten to slash API slash backend. 
I could write it to something else. Uh, 429 is the right message. I could API blocked go make that a 429 in the API. So let's do that. New file blocked.ts. You know what? I bet that these guys thought ahead here. And in their next example, I have a feeling. Look at that. There's your 429 that you were absolutely correct is the thing we should be sending. Git status, git add. Send correct blocked response, git push. And now we have a properly rate limited spec compliant solution. How cool is that? So as I didn't announce the stream, I absolutely did. I'll hit the publish button in case that didn't get published, but yeah. Fantastic to have you guys here. We're talking Redis now. And I am genuinely really hyped at how easy that was to set up. I am probably going to start throwing this in front of a lot of my other APIs because my shit's getting spammed hard lately. <laughs> Yeah, this is a video in and of itself. I'm going to hit that marker button because everything before that can, can be a video of its own. And I want to play with some harder stuff now. I don't often say, wow, that was really good about someone else's Next.js code. But this was fantastic. The example in here was exactly what we needed. It was the middleware. I would have liked for it to have a better matcher. Oh, I just realized that the matcher also runs on the blocked, which is bad. So I need to opt out of the matcher. Oh, no, it has, they handled this here. Oh, no, did they? No, we're not opting out if the batch is, uh, or if the match is for something else. Uh, I can change that very quickly, though. Uh, let's quickly console log the request URL just to make sure it is what I think it is. Uh, are we ready to send? Nope, that's not what I was thinking. I want the path then. I think that that's an option here. Uh, is it not anymore? Next URL? That might be what I'm looking for. Uh, protocol. Yeah, that's what I'm looking for. So I'm doing a quick opt out here. So if request dot next URL path name. Let's get out of here early. If request, oh, was that auto completing correctly? Cool. Then we escape. I guess I can do the right thing. Comment early escape if hitting the blocked redirect. Cool. Fix redirect, get push. Nice. So now that's fixed in production. I should probably check the production environment. I don't care enough to. I trust it works, and if it doesn't, somebody will yell at me. 